Some years ago, it was quite common to call yourself a web developer. And actually, when you browse jobs, that's the title you would see most often. However, as the web has become increasingly more sophisticated, many developers have decided to specialize. You are either a front-end developer or you are a back-end developer. In this video, we are going to explore the differences between front-end development and back-end development. And at that point, if you decide, yeah, front-end development is something I'm interested in, we're also going to explore what specific technologies you need to know, where to learn them, and how long you should expect to spend in order to become a competent, proficient, and maybe even hireable web developer if that's your thing. My name is Alex, I'm a self-taught developer, and I really like to teach the things I wish I knew. So that's what this is. Let's get into it. So what is front-end development? In a nutshell, front-end development is the process of planning and coding and sometimes designing everything the user touches and interacts with on a website. Front-end developers code up components like buttons, drop-downs, text forms, and alerts, and then assemble them to create what we typically call a layout. A front-end developer will also set fonts, padding between components so things feel breathable and easy to read, as well as other bits to make the website more presentable. Sometimes front-end developers also design these components and layouts, but, but not always. Oftentimes, as a developer, you will work with a designer, such as a UI designer, and turn their designs into an interactive website. More realistically, as a newer front-end developer or someone who is self-taught, you will rely heavily on inspiration from the web. As I mentioned, the web has become increasingly sophisticated over the years. A big reason for that is just the myriad of devices your website needs to run on. And a big challenge is making sure that when a user opens the website, they can easily find the information or take the action they want to, no matter what device they're using, be that a tablet, a laptop, or even a TV in some cases. To achieve this, you typically use a combination of HTML and CSS, which are two technologies we'll talk a bit more about in a second. Another very important part of front-end web development is interactivity. For example, now you've got the button on the page exactly where you want it, what is going to happen when the user presses it? And so we express these logical instructions using code and the coding language we use on the web is JavaScript. You know, this is the beginner's guide, but the most advanced web developers will code up components that use a combination of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript to build things you might not have imagined. Like what about a component or an interface to pick your seat at the theater? Or what about an interface to preview options on a brand new Mini Cooper? These type of things make the web and the experience better for users, which of course you can feel good about, but they also directly generate revenue for businesses. And this is one of the reasons why web developers are paid so well. In fact, the average salary for a front-end web developer in America is just shy of 80K. So in summary, we lay out the content using technologies known as HTML and CSS, and then we add interactive behavior to our websites using JavaScript. Now we'll actually dissect these in more detail in the upcoming section of this video. But before we dive head first into the magical world of front-end web development, I feel like you should understand a little bit about back-end development and how it differs. If front-end development is everything the user touches and interacts with, back-end development is everything the user does not see. A bedrock of back-end development is storing and retrieving data from a centralized database. You can imagine how if your website is viewed by a bunch of different people, there needs to be something in common so that they can share messages or see the same data represented. You need a back-end for that. Another big proponent of back-end development is accepting and processing data. For example, when I upload this YouTube video, I will use YouTube's front-end interface to write the title. So a front-end developer will have created that title input. I will also use the front-end interface to choose the thumbnail and to actually select and upload the file. A front-end developer did all of this. But the moment I press upload, we need to go to a back-end. When I press upload, there will be some front-end code that starts to upload this file to a back-end. 
And when the back end receives it, that's where the processing happens. Another example of processing might be when you pay or you buy something online. Again, the interface where you view all of your shopping cart items and change the quantity, this happens on the front end. You can enter your credit card using a front end interface too. When the time comes to pay, that goes to the back end for more advanced processing, including things like credit card verification. I have to admit that that distinction between the front end and the back end, or knowing where the front end ends and the back end begins, can be quite difficult to grok. Don't worry if it's not crystal clear in your head right now. The really cool thing about learning web development in general is that you start to see the web in a totally different way. And I wouldn't be surprised if you browse the web after this video and you start to notice a little bit where the front end and back end come into play. So, which is right for you? Both front-end and back-end development are lucrative specializations with lots of interesting challenges to solve. I suppose then it really depends on which you prefer and where you think your opportunities lie. The honest truth is you can always switch later because even though front-end and back-end are specializations, meaning some things don't transfer, they are both ultimately based on coding, figuring out problems and research. And these are the kind of skills that will transfer with you if you ever decide to take the other half of the stack for a walk. If you're excited about front-end development, or maybe just curious, we're now going to break down the three core skills that you need in order to become a successful front-end developer, which are HTML and CSS, JavaScript, and JavaScript web frameworks. Let's start with HTML and CSS, which you already know a little bit about. For better or for worse, we can't just speak English at our computers and be like, hey, put the button there. And so we use a special text file format or language known as HTML to tell the web browser what content we want on the page. Here, we tell the browser what content to include on the page, which is the text hello world, as well as what type of content it is. H1 means a header size one. One means biggest, and then there's all the way down to five, which are, which are smaller for like subheadings and things. Obviously, this doesn't look that good. It's quite boring and even a little bit ugly. That's where CSS comes in. So HTML lets you put the content on the page, and then we use CSS to make it pretty. For example, here we select the header one that we defined with our HTML. And when you're starting out, it's really a case of setting values. Color, red. Font, sans fonts. Size, 100 pixels, please. I totally understand if this is the first time you're looking at stuff like this. It probably seems a bit bewildering. But the funny thing to me is that if you were in a graphical interface like Photoshop, picking the color and the font and the size, you wouldn't think twice about it. Like it's quite intuitive. Web development sometimes seems a bit scary because we represent things in a text format. So you spend a lot of time on the keyboard. That said, I would not make the mistake of thinking that CSS is easy because to be honest, setting colors and fonts and things are quite basic and you can have some really fun results very early on because of it. But CSS gets a bit more challenging and puzzling when you get into the realm of like positioning things on the page. And as I mentioned previously, this ever long challenge of making sure that your website looks how you expect it to across different devices. To be clear, HTML and CSS are independent and different. I grouped them together as one skill here because they're essentially married. It's practically unheard of to use one without the other. You certainly wouldn't use CSS without HTML because the whole point of CSS is to style your HTML, right? Together, they help you code up and lay out your components and create really wonderful experiences. Now, if you want to understand this and master this, my advice is to not just like read and watch tutorials and things like that, because that's a little bit like reading books about tennis and expecting to get better at the sports. You really need your hands on the racket to get better, or in the case of front-end development, your keyboard. At Scrimba, we've actually created a course orientated around teaching you the fundamentals, but also building projects along the way. Our free HTML and CSS course will guide you to build a Google.com clone, a digital business card, a space exploration site, and a birthday gift site you can share with somebody on their birthday, and a way to sort of show off your front-end developer skills earlier rather than later. It's completely free, so why not check it out? There's a link in the description. But for this video, next up, let's look at JavaScript. 
Earlier, you saw how to put a header with HTML, right? So we use that H1 tag. Well, you can also create a button and put the text that you want on the button between these two like button elements. But say a user clicks that button, what do you want to happen? Just for demonstration purposes, we show an alert message that says, Booyah! But maybe now you can imagine that with these fundamental building blocks, which are HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, you can build virtually anything you can imagine. For example, say that button said dark mode, and when you clicked it, you wrote some JavaScript code to change all of the colors on your website to be a dark color. Maybe you write some other JavaScript code that makes that button now say light mode, and depending on what mode the website's in, it will kind of invert the colors, right? Another example could be an image carousel or a slideshow, I guess you could say, but even that would be just scratching the surface. Some people in the tech community will get upset if you call HTML and CSS programming. And the reason why is because with HTML and CSS, you essentially declare what you want to happen. But JavaScript, on the other hand, is very much about programming. And the biggest challenge is learning how to think like a programmer. Well, programming is kind of like coming up with those instructions and thinking like a programmer often means thinking through edge cases and how you will respond to them in your applications. And once you thought about them, you represent your thought process as a set of logical instructions using code. And just to reiterate, in the world of the web, the coding language we use is JavaScript. And it is incredibly prevalent and incredibly powerful because as it happens, even though on the web you have to use JavaScript, like JavaScript is the only coding language that really works in the web browser for websites. Over the years, it's become possible to use JavaScript in places where you have more options, like the backend or for building games or for coding IoT devices. All of this to say, in 2022, JavaScript is one of the best languages you can learn because it can be transferred to other disciplines or specializations should you ever wish to try. At Scrimba, we really like to focus on front-end development because if you're not sure where to begin, it's honestly a great starting point. And once you've learned HTML and CSS using our free course, you can also check out our seven-hour Learn JavaScript for free course, which also guides you to build several projects in order to make sure you remember what you're learning and not just watch Roger Federer play tennis, hoping to become better. <laughs> Typically, I would expect you to learn things in the order I've presented them because you can't really like use CSS unless you know HTML, right? Because CSS styles HTML. You can't really make much use of JavaScript unless you know HTML and CSS because JavaScript adds interactivity to an existing HTML and CSS website. The same can be said for our last subject, which is JavaScript web frameworks. This is a more intermediate topic and it really doesn't make sense to learn them until you have a more solid grasp of JavaScript. That said, I want to help you understand what they are and why they exist because they come up quite often at the beginning of most front-end web developers' journeys. In a nutshell, JavaScript web frameworks are pre-written code modules that help you build common features of websites more quickly and more efficiently. You don't strictly need a framework, no one does. If you imagine the most complex web apps like you know Facebook or Google Docs or something like that, um, they probably do use a framework, but they didn't need to. The reason why teams, almost every team in fact, use a front-end framework is because it saves time, it's efficient, and if you're working as part of a team, when you use a framework, it's natural to do things in the way of the framework, and that results in consistent code for everybody can more easily understand and contribute to. The most popular front-end web frameworks today in 2022 are React, Angular, and Vue. Learning one of them is all you need to do, and it's a big plus. As for which to learn, we at Scrimba recommend React. But the honest truth is you can pick any of them and be very successful. You can achieve the exact same thing with React, Angular, or Vue, albeit in a slightly different way. As it happens, a lot of the core concepts behind these web frameworks, like the problem they solve, and in some cases, the way they solve them, will transfer. So if you learn, you know, let's, use, let's just use a different example. If you learn Vue.js today, but in six, nine months, you realize, oh, the jobs in my area are mostly uh, hiring for React developers. It will take you a few weeks only to learn React and get up to speed compared to maybe a month and a half or so when you're first starting out and learning your first framework. 
As for how long it takes to become a successful web developer, it is quite hard to say as we're all starting from different places and have different proclivities and existing skills and frankly we're all aiming for slightly different places. Some of us want to be freelancers, others want to be uh, junior front-end developers and the timeline can vary. But I am very fortunate to host the Scrimba podcast where I've spoken to more than 30 recently hired self-taught developers. Some are freelancers, but most are junior developers. And the number I've arrived at is about two to three hours a day for six to nine months. And there will always be outliers who do it incredibly quickly. Like Frederick is one example. He genuinely went from not knowing any code to being hired within three months using Scrimba, which was insanely impressive. But I've also spoken with students like Christoph, who it took over a year because they were learning to code alongside a full-time job. I actually have a whole video all about that, which you can check out here. Um, there's also an article of the same subject in the description if you prefer to read. So there we have it with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and a little bit later, a JavaScript web framework, you can build some incredible websites for your own purposes. Maybe you want to start a side project as a freelancer. Maybe you want to make some money on the side or as a junior developer, which represents a job. It's a job title for people new to the development industry where you need some knowledge to get in the door. As I say, probably six to nine months of experience. But once you're there, you're presented with so many opportunities to learn and grow while also getting paid well and having a high degree of autonomy. Front-end web development is truly special for the opportunities it affords. But lest we forget, this is the work you can do every day, day in and day out, bringing things to life, inventing things, bringing things that people imagine to reality, and in many cases, solving really interesting problems. I've been Alex Booker. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe and I'll see you next time.